YouTube, what's going on? Black Phoenix here, bringing you the YouTube viewer, another YouTube video. And in this video, we're going to be bringing you the brutal, honest opinion of Madden 16. Uh, like I said, at this stage in time, I'm going. I, this is pretty much my saying of I am retiring from the game of Madden 16. Uh, I'm done playing it. I've been, I played a lot of games. And overall, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think this is a very good Madden. I think it is better than 15. I think that it's honestly better than, slightly better than 25. But it's still not up there to where I can look back on this game and say, you know what, this was a pretty good Madden. Uh, so let me start from the beginning. Let me kind of explain my reasons why. I got, I got some notes and stuff like that to keep me a little bit on track. But uh, I'm going to kind of explain my reasoning why behind you know, things that are the reasons why I feel a certain way. So back in Madden 15, in the Madden 15, I had made a statement and I made it clear. And I said on stream at that time, I said, whenever Madden 16 comes out, you bums that throw bad decisions or throw into coverage, that chuck up streaks and that that then face catch because the face catching was pretty powerful back then. Those that do that, those that don't know how to really play the game of Madden, you guys are gonna be in trouble in Madden 16. And I remember saying that statement, hoping that I was right. And unfortunately, in this game, the bums were back in full force. Now, the originally Madden 16 didn't start off like that. Right, so Madden 16 at the very beginning of Madden 16, it was actually a pretty solid game. Like, you know, reads were being made, cover three wasn't so OP. You know, people were playing the game, you know, the right way. If they did chuck up streaks, they were getting heavily punished for it. Like I said, either because play receiver actually mattered. It was, I think, play receiver was probably like the best thing at the time. Um, because like I said, the ball would pop up a lot more or way more frequently than it does today. And then, like I said, the DB that would come in and intercept it, uh, they actually did. They actually intercepted the ball instead of just look at it or just can be completely lost about it or didn't or not track the ball. So at the beginning, the game was good. But something happened after the first tuning update. I think something, I don't know what exactly happened. And I wish in the future we can get information about what exactly is being, being tuned when it comes to tuning updates. We need more uh, clarity we need more uh, news or word about what exactly is being tuned so it's not a guessing game about well I think this is tuned and then it turns out oh well it's not tuned it's actually a little bit better or more OP than it is or you know this got nerfed for whatever reason and it shouldn't have got nerfed so that's my first issue with the game the second issue is uh, kind of a minor one and it's the commentary the commentary in this game is a little bit dry a little bit boring and honestly it needs to be changed i i for one like i said after experiencing years of phil nant or excuse me, not phil nant jim nance and phil sims i am honestly in all favor of replacing them uh as the commentators for madden 16 and i know it's kind of difficult at this stage in the game to really try to like change commentators like that but there's got to be some new guys calling the plays because most of the time, what ends up happening, I mean, it's, and for the most part, it's kind of accurate, but in certain situations, like the play or the, the commentary is just all over the place. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I feel like sometimes it's a little bit, not, not a shot to them personally, but game wise, uh, it's a little bit, when they, when they call a couple of things, it just sounds idiotic. It doesn't make sense. And it's just like, why, why are you saying that? That doesn't, that doesn't apply anywhere. <laughs> uh, in the game or anywhere in Madden, so like, why did you say that? So, um, that's my that's the minor issue. Now, do I think this game is better than 15? Yes, I honestly think it's better than 15. How much better? It's slightly better. There are a lot of things that still happen that are from 15 that really still kind of irk me, and uh, mainly it's that the zones are still broken and they're they're fixing that so. Or at least hopefully, that's what they say. Um, you know, zones are still broken, meaning the flat still doesn't play the flat. You know, when you play it or you re-deep blue somebody, they don't play the, the proper way. 
you know, it's, it's a variety of things and issues with the zones that make it seem like it forces you to play one dimension, which realistically is call cover t- or call cover two men or two men contain out of quarters, press and l- literally let the game play for you. You pl- you probably like get a line in it or a deep put or play the D line, play the safety, run around and nothing. And you are going to lock up your opponent, which should never have. I don't understand why. Man to man got so overpowered this year. Like I don't know what the reason is for. I thought it was fine, uh, personally. Like I said, slants and drags to kill it, um, things of that nature. You know, I, I didn't think it was an issue, but now it's so OP to like literally mirrors your routes. Uh, like I said, there's obviously solutions for that. You know, unbumpable hitches and stuff like that, but and drags and everything like that. But even still, like. Even if they do beat the man to man, sometimes I'm not talking about the hitches. I'm talking about like drags and other things. Uh, maybe like out. I remember it's like ten and outs used to be man pretty uh, pretty nice, and I miss those days. But what I find is, especially like ten and ends or any type of in route or uh, anything like that, like I find that the the computer or man or at least in man to man cover the mechanics are set up to where they like warp up to the ball. And like end up making a play on the ball, and even though they can be like beat like maybe a couple of steps here and there, they continue to like warp or play the like like I said they could be like ten like five speed slower, but yet still stick on my receivers. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. And like I said, they're looking. I think Greg said he was looking at that too. So we'll see. Like I said, a lot of it is kind of like we will see. You know, my thing, especially is here's my biggest complaint is that. Madden needs to make a decision, or at least the developers need to make a decision. We've had our first esports event out of the way, right? And now everybody's saying competitive Madden is back. Competitive Madden is back. If the game does not reflect competitive Madden at at a very normal online head-to-head type of stage, you know, is competitive like will competitive Madden be back? And what I mean by this, let me explain this. I kind of probably said that, I probably worded that pretty terribly. So what I mean by this is, right now, as of probably since we moved to next gen, I mean, what I mean by that is Xbox One, PS4. Ever since we moved to next gen, what I've noticed is that this game has become more and more and more casual, uh, and not in a good way. Let me actually just get rid of Odell dancing because he's kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> I've seen the same thing. Um, what I mean by that is that. The game has become so arcade, not mm, kind of arcadey, but it's become so casual to the point where like it's frustrating to a lot of people that do in fact take the game seriously, that do in fact play at a high level, that do play this game to like where you know where we get those Madden challenges or anything like that, or at that level. It's become so casual that it's it's honestly kind of it's kind of silly. It's kind of silly. It's kind of unbearable at this point in time. And let's be honest, it's it's become to the point where a four year old can literally pick up the game and be in close competition with somebody that's probably been playing Madden at a high level for years and be only down three or maybe in very close competitions, very close games with that person and that should not happen it's got to the point where literally you can be in fourth and 30 and play quarters three deep and literally your opponent can chuck up a streak and literally this receiver can aggressive catch all over your defensive back doesn't even matter at this stage it really doesn't even matter who because i've got an aggressive catch by all like Everybody and anybody. I've got aggressive catch with Darren Sproles. I've got aggressive ca- caught on with Eddie Lacy. I've got aggressive caught on with halfback J- or was it halfback or fullback JJ Watt. JJ Watt. I've seen pitch. I've seen video where uh, punters, where punters and kickers are aggressive catching. I've seen videos of where um, quarterbacks. On on wildcat formations are aggressive catching, so it's it's base it's really op. It's really op, and like I said, that type of mentality where somebody could chuck up streaks, chuck up balls, throw in double coverage, throw in a triple coverage, 
throw the quadruple coverage and not get punished for it with an interception or you know running around with a three yard two who has like probably like the one of the lowest carrying ratings in Madden you come down with Cam Chancellor full force and Dre Archer doesn't fumble and especially gets not only just okay you know he hit, he got a hit stick and got up whatever the case may be but he gets he gets popped two three four times in a row and doesn't fumble like how so you're telling me like we're at the stage in time where we can literally play cover four and it gets beat by one play touchdowns like PAYRC ran and uh those shot plays, uh, like single back doubles, that shot, PA shot post or PA shot wheel, whatever the case may be, we're getting one play touchdowns off that. Are we at the stage now where we can literally play blindfolded and somebody on the sides can coach us and tell us what to do and still be in close competition with our opponent who's playing online head to head seasons? Are we telling me that? We're at that level where full or punt fake passes are so accurate that even a cornerback, a CB, with stone hands, is and the reason why they play corner and not right receivers because they can't catch, can literally just aggressive catch on and convert the first down. Or even, not even that, but the punter can throw so accurately, like maybe 30 or 40 yards down the field with no type of throw power, with no type of accuracy, and get the ball literally open downfield. <laughs> and catch and the and the and the punt guys, the gunners can actually catch that. Like, are we at that? We're at that level right now, and that cannot happen going into seventeen. That can't happen. I'm sorry, that can't happen. As as somebody that's been playing thousands of thousands of Madden games over the past few years, this casual, this casual. Hey, you can four year old pick up the game, and I understand the motive of it as a business. You want as many people playing your game as possible, and that's fine. I understand that as a business, but as a game, I can't. I can't give it a pass. I cannot give it a pass. It's just it's it's not good. It's not good because when people look at the game, and when people outside people that are former players look at the game, and say, you know what, how's Madden this year? Most of the time, like I said, well, if somebody asked me how Madden was this year, I would say terrible. It's not good. Visually wise, it looks good. The modes themselves are good, but the gameplay itself is terrible. Until they get to that point where they actually reward user adjustments. Until they get to the point where zones are actually fixed. Until they get to the point where, hey, if I made a bad read, I'm actually getting intercepted instead of somebody or one of my defenders swatting it for what no freaking reason, which never makes any sense. You're throwing right at them, and you're going to swat it down. In what world in the NFL, if a quarterback throws right at the defender, he's just going to be like, nah, fam, I'm good. I'm going to swat it down. Like, what? No. No. And we never got an explanation for that, a clear explanation in my mind of why that happens, why they choose to be so conservative and swat down. Why, whenever they throw towards my zones, my zone keep backing up. Instead of attacking the ball in the air as the ball is being released, they just keep backing up and act like they don't know what's going on. Why does that happen? They need to fix that. There's a couple of other things, too, that need to be fixed. These, these, the offensive line logic has to be fixed. Pass blocking, run blocking. There's so many times where people are coming in that shouldn't come in. On both run, like anything besides inside zone, fullback dive and pitch needs to be buffed up majorly in the running game department. Those three runs that I mentioned earlier, inside zone, fullback dive and pitch, nerfed. They need to take a nerf. There's no way why inside. I mean, like I said, I know NFL teams are using the inside zone run as part of their schemes, as part of their base schemes and everything like that, and that's fine. But at the same time, they also incorporate a lot of other runs which don't get that block the same perfect blocking or the same amount of strength on the blocks as the inside zone as a fullback dive, which should never go for more than like maybe one or two yards, especially if the defense is set up for it. A lot of times they see I see people fullback diving for like 10, 20 yards, you know, five or more yards than they should, especially with slow fullbacks that have like literally no ball carrier vision whatsoever. I'm also kind of a big proponent of this manual sub of O-line to tight end, run blocking tight ends at wide receiver needs to go. I'm sorry. If it's not a package, 
that shouldn't happen. Because, like I said, how is the defense supposed to counteract that when you got like super jumbo package out there, and we only have CBs and linebackers? We can only do so much. We're not going to be playing goal line at like the fifty yard line to counteract that. That's not going to happen. You know, we only have CBs, and CBs are only as so strong unless you, like I said, you're playing mud, and eventually you get like the strong CBs like Night Train Lane or maybe a Ronnie Lott out of position player, but. I feel like those days of subbing those wide receivers to tight end, or excuse me, tight ends to wide receivers, offensive line, tight end, running like a strong power, running inside zones, and running, just basically just running the football and pancaking the guys. All right, that's got to go. It's got to go. Quarterback sneak, the fact that he gets untouched most of the time, you got to set up so many things for a quarterback sneak. And even then, you're going to probably most likely whiff. And the quarterback sneak glitch where you could just fake pitch it and not fumble. And at least physics-wise, it looks bad. It doesn't make sense logically. Like that that's gotta be that's gotta be changed. That's gotta be changed, man. Like there's no other way around it. Again, is it how how are we gonna progress in Madden, y'all? Is it gonna be all about the casual scene, because if it's about the casual scene, still in Madden 17, then it's, I honestly don't see Madden progressing the way it should. And like I said, I'm only saying this because I'm actually passionate about the game of Madden. The only reason I'm being so brutally honest, and it may not seem brutally honest to you, it may seem like this is, this is just light work, but at the same time, y'all, most of you guys that are watching this video understand where I'm coming from. Most of you guys understand that or our decent players understand the frustration it is when somebody is literally throwing aggressive catches left or throwing up lob streaks left and right and they're coming down with it and you're playing the best defense you can do or the best defense possible and because like I say you can have 99 zone coverage and Richard Sherman and somebody can still aggressive catch you with T.Y. Hilton somebody can still aggressive catch you with Darren Sproles like and you're frustrated because you're just like yo I've done everything I can do, or maybe two man contain, and he gets a fade away, a 100% catch animation, or he gets the animation where the receiver is on the defender's back and just rolls around and flips up and then just keeps going, or your your cornerback jumps it, your quarterback or a safety corner or safety actually jumps the pass, but for whatever reason it's somehow some way magnetically put in the receiver's hands and you get pancake and rolled out of the way. You guys know the frustration of when, like I said, I'm repeating this again to make it clear. You guys know the frustration of when somebody is thrown into double coverage, triple coverage, like five times. Like they can do first down, throw in the coverage, swat. Second down, throw in the coverage, drop. Third down, throw in the coverage, swat it again. Throwing right at your defender at fourth down, and somehow his receiver comes up with it, or somehow it's an accurate pass, or somehow, some way, it's it's a conversion. Chuck up streaks, whatever the case may be. We cannot have that in Madden 17. And honestly, that's unacceptable. As for as for a highly competitive person, and as far as somebody that's playing at a high level or has played the game at a high level, that's unacceptable. If they really are struggling that bad to make a read, go to Skills Trainer down here. Go to Practice Mode, and they need to learn how to make reads. I'm sorry. I'm not a big proponent of casual... You know this casual system we've been getting and sports games especially they had like the developers need to make a decision like i said if they can't make the reads and games too hard for them go to practice mode that's how you get better you want to learn how to get better go to skills training that's what they're there for and the thing is a lot of people don't i don't see that response from a lot of people oh i'm struggling to be cover three i'm struggling to be cover four go to skills training go to practice mode they wait it's like they wait for like the ebook to tell them they wait for the one play touchdowns to come up on youtube and against zone coverage or man coverage. They wait for those to come out instead of actually getting better at the game. That can't happen, man. Same thing with blitzes. Everybody waits until the first ebook happens before, you know, for the first blitz to come out and start using it. But nobody wants to take the time to learn how to slide protect. Everybody wants to cry, nanos, nanos, nanos. But nobody wants to slide protect. Nobody wants to hit the flat because most of the time, uh, most of the blitzes are three shell blitzes and nobody wants to hit the flat most of the time. Or do a, a smoke screen or something like that and turn up field. Nobody wants to do that. Also, speaking of turning up field, too, the rack catching and possession catching definitely need a buff. The rack catching, for whatever reason, I feel like the system overrides 
your decision. I feel like it that like you would want to like say you're throwing it across you know the middle of the field and you want to put possession catch it. The game forces you to rat catch it. Same thing like say you're playing against a cover three, you pull out four verticals in the street, uh, the seam is butt naked open, and you throw it right to the seam and you want to hit rat catch. The game forces the, the the receiver to do an aggressive catch. Don't know why that happens. I wish we can get an explanation for that as well, but that can't happen. That cannot happen. Rating, like I said, fumbling. That's another thing. I feel like it's so random. But, like you said, you can have people running around with Drew Yarcher, Tavon Austin. These guys that have, like, no type of carrying whatsoever. Get popped by, like, a Night Train Lane. Get popped by a Cam Chancellor. Get popped by, like, a Ron Landry. And nobody fumbles. There's no fumbles. But guarantee you come on the field, you run, like, maybe one good run and somehow, some way, your legend running back fumbles. Or a Marshawn Lynch fumbles, or Alfred Morris fumbles. It just it just doesn't make sense. It's not consistent. It's not consistent. I feel like sometimes it's even one sided. I feel like a lot of times when people play the game, the game is decided for you before you even take a snap on the field. This game it get, and it, it shouldn't happen. The game shouldn't automatically decide who's going to win or lose. And sometimes it doesn't. But a lot of times the game steps in, and that's why people say I get E eight a lot. I get mad and you know, mad and screwing me, mad and it's cheating me because, like I said, it's not the game. It's the gameplay that's screwing. Them. It's not the person that's behind the sticks half the time. Sometimes, but it's because the game automatically decides for you that you're gonna get screwed. The game automatically decides for you. You know what? You're gonna be fumbling today, or you're gonna be dropping a lot of picks today. Oh, he's throwing right at your defender. Swat. Oh, he's throwing up uh, streaks and double coverage. Catch. Oh, he's uh, throwing it into quadruple coverage. Oh, we're, we're going to drop that. You guys, your defenders got hands on it, but uh, we're going to drop that. Or he threw it to the flats when your flat. The flat doesn't play it. Your flat's playing five, uh, 15 yards up the field, by the way. Uh, like a purple, which, by the way, I wonder what happened to those. I, um, cover 2 sync comes out this year. It's man-to-man -man coverage. I honestly want to, I really, really would hope to have an explanation of what happened to purples this year. Like, especially this year. like Or even just in general, since we moved to next gen, because I feel like the purples just aren't just zones, flats and purples, and even yellows are just non-existent this year. The deep blues, like I said, if I didn't, I, don't, I feel like if I didn't do that dissecting video on how bad the deep blue was, I didn't, they didn't patch how the uh, deep blue was supposed to interact, then we would have been in a lot more trouble. And like I said, like I said, the one play touchdown, especially against Cover Four, should never happen. Shot play should never be as effective as it is. Uh, currently in this game. Like I said, that's something they need to fix. My biggest fear of, though, coming into the Madden 17, is two things. One, they're going to add a feature that's going to be so overpowered like it, like it is this year with the aggressive catch and rack catch, possession catch, all that stuff. That's going to be my biggest fear. The second one is this. the past. If you notice in the past, we've been having this kind of trend lately where whoever the cover athlete is kind of represents what's broken in the game. For example, I, I can say I can only speak to from Madden 25 because that's the only game I really played. Like I said, where I started my competitive, um, where I started my competitive competitive level of Madden. But we had two running backs. We have Adrian Peterson and Barry Sanders. Both running backs are very good. You know, obviously Barry Sanders is one of the greatest of all time. But guess what was broken during that that game? The run game, strong powers, buck sweeps, halfback counters out of pistol. Have back zone runs out of iPhone where your guys would get pancaked no matter who was on the field. You could have a Tavon Austin pancake at Night Train Lane. You have a Tavon Austin pancake at Ray Lewis if you if you really want to in that game. Next thing you know, we jump to Madden 15. Richard Sherman and Legion of the Boom. Guess what they play? Cover three. Guess what was overpowered in that game? Cover three. Where they literally played the scenes, they played everything under the sun. Everybody played a cover three. There is no excuse. At that point in time, there really was no excuse why you wouldn't play a cover three, honestly, because of how overpowered that 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 was, honestly. And the one time it didn't work was against like pistol bunch tight end, and that was because I don't know, maybe it was like a, a mechanic issue or something like that. So now we get to Odell Beckham and the catch, right? Odell Beckham does a fantastic, spectacular catch. Everybody knows the OBJ catch at this point in time. Guess what's overpowered? The spectacular catches, the aggressive catches. That's the most overpowered thing, unfortunately. I wish they would. I wish I could say more on that, but you know, that's y'all already know how this goes. 
So now the question is, who's the next cover athlete? And is that a reflection of what's going to be broken in the game? And if so, well, unfortunately, here we go again. Same old story. Same old song and dance with Madden. But if it isn't, and the game actually reflects like a competitive game that it should be, you know, being a sports game, you play sports is skill versus skill, team versus team, scheme versus scheme. But we'll see what happens in Madden 17. I honestly look forward to it. And if it's not, I'm a, like I said, we'll be back here next year. Same old story until the until they get it right. And like I said, this is just my opinion, by the way. Don't take anything I say personally. This is just how I honestly feel about the game. As somebody, as a consumer of the game, as somebody that plays the game at a high level, as somebody that's actually passionate about getting man to where it is, and that's why I'm doing these videos, is to basically get in the developer's ear as many times as I possibly can and say, listen, you guys need to fix it. And like I said, most of the time, they, they already know it. Either by the way the community says it, the game changers tell them, the stream team tells them, whoever is in charge tells them. Or whoever can give them solid feedback will tell them. They they know a good amount of issues. Now the question the question is, and obviously they can't get to every single little thing, but at the same time, how we how, can we say that Madden 17 will be better than 16? Can we look at Madden 17 and say, hey, this is that was actually a good Madden. Madden hasn't been good in my mind from what I've hear, from what I've heard, stories I've been asking, especially former players have been playing this game. A long time since, like maybe like the 08s, 07s, 06s, 05s, all that stuff. They say the last good Madden was Madden 13. Last gen Madden. Can you can you really think about that? Last gen Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. Madden 13 was literally the last good Madden game that we've had. Some say 12, uh, and others say 13, and most people say 13 too. But just think about that. Just think about that for a second. Like I said, we'll see what happens in Madden 17. And like I said, this don't don't take this wrong. Don't take it as bashing. Once again, this is my opinion. I don't get paid for this. I'm not a, like I said. I don't work for EA. I'm not a game changer. I'm not anybody. I'm just a guy that is a content creator, a streamer, and somebody that plays the game at a high level and plays this game an awful lot and wants this game to be the best that it can be and reflect actual skill reads adjustment scheme and team as best as possible in a simulation football game so on a note guys that is my opinion let me know how you guys feel if you agree with anything i said let me know and say why tweet me comment section it whatever the case may be if you disagree with it same thing tweet me comment section like it share it tag a developer but y'all gotta understand Man cannot be the same. Mad, this man 17, this casual level stuff. Mm -mm. That's a no go. That's a no. That's that's we can't have that no more. Go back to the, the go back to the roots of Madden that made Madden so good. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you guys for watching the long video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so. Follow the Twitch channel and Twitter channel. Those will be in the description below if you haven't done so. I'll see you guys later. Five G's. Peace.